I was eyeing and, you know, I was, I really wanted to work in. So, um, I came back. Somehow it didn't work out. And then um, I had an opportunity in a bank to work. But then I started, um, eventually I started. But something was just not right within me. At that point, I already had a child. And the first day I had gone to work, um, my, I left home, I don't know, maybe 4.30 or something. By the time I came home, it was like maybe 11 p.m. or 12. And, you know, I just had to sit down and was like, I don't know, because my husband travels a lot. I mean, sometimes two weeks, three weeks. I mean, my daughter was asleep when I was going. She was sleeping when I came back. And I just thought, you know, is this what I will be doing every time? I think I need to create something for myself that gives me, that I feel fulfilled in, that also gives me that family time whenever I want it. So, you know, I like to cook. I like to, I didn't actually know I would start a food business. I like to cook. I would just, I would do different things, pastries and all of that, share to people, give to family and friends. And one day, someone said to me, you really like to cook, I do all this, mede, mede. so why don't you just start a food business? So I thought, oh, that's a good idea, actually. So eventually, that's how it, it, it sort of all started. And I think I find my fulfillment doing that because even though, to be honest, sometimes it's even more tedious than the jobs I run away from uh, because sometimes I'm home um, or in the store till 2 a.m. or where time. But I can call my shots. I, I can control my time. So that's probably one of the major reasons why I went into, into owning my business. And definitely the, <laughs> there's no going back on that one. So, um, yeah, is there anything that you learned from school, like from MassCom, that you apply in your business now? Yeah, sure. There are a lot of things I have learned. I learned as a communicator. Definitely, personally, I think I would, I would consider myself a shy person, or maybe I just like to mind my business. Drink <laughs> water. Um, so, sort of that being a communicator has helped me to overcome my shyness to an extent to relate with people to an extent. Um, of course, uh, marketing, com also I did, I did marketing for my masters. So that also helped me as well to, you know, to apply certain things to business. So really, it, it does, it helped. Okay, so um, we'll go on a 30 second break for tea. Tea. Oh, we should take tea. Oh. Tea. A tea break. If you guys don't know it, like another word that you should write down. Tea break. Please take notes. Use it in the future. Oh, did they share tea to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Ah, nice. Like I'll be coming. To this. Is there this Sunday? <laughs> I'll be
Okay, so we are back. Everybody went on tea break except me. We are forgiving. People cared. <laughs> they didn't give me tea. It's fine. You are forgiving. So, um, please, like, even in as much as we are taking our tea, yeah, let's still try to write. Don't pour tea on your jota, please. So, um, Mal, so we are talking about you as an entrepreneur now. And so far we've seen um, the link between your course and what you did and how it was so ma the journey so far how has it been as an entrepreneur balancing the home balancing your work balancing what you do in the church and everything you do how has it been the journey so far um the journey is still far anyway but <laughs> so far sometimes it gets really tedious fine i went into it because i i have a passion for it and i can imagine what those that do things that they don't have passion for, you'll be struggling seriously with whatever you're doing. So that brings me to a point. You need to find yourself at a particular time in your life where what you do, you love it. If you don't, it creates a lot of frustration for you. There are times that I, I felt like, oh my God, what am I even doing? I'm not even doing a gay self. Ah. At least I'll share it. I'm not. I'm. I'm not suffering. What's all this? You are about to give up. Honestly, there are moments like that that I felt like ah no, because um, especially at the beginning, trying to structure, trying to staff, finance, everything coupled with what I had to do as a as a family woman was you know it was re- there was really a lot of conflict. But over time, I've I've sort of created a structure for myself. That allows me time to do certain things. So I know that this time, even though it's not like super two to three, you must sleep. Four to five. But at least I have a structure that works for me, that is specular for me. And somehow I'm, I'm trying to manage it. It's not I'm not there yet. I mean, my staff sometimes they do things that you know make the business look somehow or um, or we just don't meet our expectations. There are times that maybe we've had late orders and that really disturbed me. There are times we've had one thing or the other, but God has been faithful. Same for the family. Somehow, like I said, I've been able to, I, you know, if I have to take my children to work, I take them to work. If I have to, uh, if we have to stay awake while I'm doing something, we are doing assignments, we somehow just make it work. It's not easy sometimes, but, you know, God is faithful. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so Ma, Ma, do you have any tips on balancing and time management? Yeah. Um, I think when it comes to balancing, you first of all need to know what is important to you before you can balance. If you don't have priorities, definitely you will, but you, will, you might not be able to balance or you'll be balancing wrongly. So when you figure out what is important to you, then you can now start talking about, about um, balancing it. Secondly, on the issue of time management, um, also what you consider important will determine how you allot your time to search. So, for example, my family is priority for me. So I know that um, most of my time I give to them, especially at a point. I know that God is important. You know, there are times that we don't joke with certain things. So obviously, night devotion, morning devotion having time to just fellowship and talk about the Bible. Those are important things to us. And no matter what is happening, we are doing it. Do you understand? So having to, knowing what is priority to you will also help you to plan your time. And time management is very important, especially in this time and age. Because you realize that, I mean, have you ever, maybe the day, it's morning, and then you realize that, you look at your watch, it's 4 p.m. Ah, 4 p.m., what happened? What have I done today? So that's how life is. It just keeps moving. And if you don't structure yourself, if you don't plan yourself properly, you just realize that certain things just, you know, just keep going. And you feel like you're not, you're not achieving, you're not getting to that place where God wants you to be or where you want to be, for, you know, where you've seen yourself or where you think you should be. So it's very important to have a structure. It's very important to have time allotted to different things in your life that you feel are important. The rest can follow on that later. Okay. 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 So um, one thing I, I think everybody should get is that if you don't prioritize, 
you might not know how to balance so i, I think everybody should write that down if you didn't write that down before very important point very important so um ma you grew up in the home of a high profile pastor you married into the home of another high profile pastor marrying a high profile pastor <laughs> So um, for you, how like when you you know like someone like me now I'm a pastor's child and when I was growing up I used to say it on my I will never marry a pastor. Like was it was it the same thing for you? Like yes now. <laughs> <laughs> I will, now many people said I, now I realize why many people said I will never marry a pastor maybe because of their fathers. Some fathers are nasty. I mean, I, I remember speaking to a, a young lady and she was like, anytime their dad comes home, like they don't have any relationship, even though he's a pastor and he's counseling like a thousand people, and all, but they don't have a relationship. So when he comes, everybody just disappears or finds someone else, have form one activity or the other. And you know, how are you fine? How are you fine? That's all. But they don't have a connection. So for that reason, she's not marrying a pastor because she feels like really, on a superficial level, everything is fine, but much inside the home, there's issues, so she's not. But for me, I didn't want to marry a pastor because I just didn't want to marry a pastor. Um, I, I, I think I wanted my, I've, I've seen my dad share himself a lot with people. Share himself in the sense that, you know, there's a lot to balance for him um, in ministry. Him coming home, also wanting to be around his family and all of that. And I just wanted a very low-key person that, you know, we'll go to church, we'll come back, we we'll do everything we're supposed to do. Maybe even work, we're workers in church, but not necessarily a pastor. I just, I just didn't want it. But not because my parents are anything negative or anything. But I just felt like, you know, it's fine. I want my husband to myself. And I... <laughs> Uh, it's true now. And um, I just didn't want all that expectation around, you know, I didn't want my children to grow up with people having so much expectation of them, like how people had expectations of me. So for that reason, I didn't want to marry a pastor. Thank you. Okay, so now so, that you didn't so want So now. How did it happen? <laughs> oh, how did it happen? Yeah. Which one? Where do I start from? <laughs> Okay, so I never even knew him um, from anywhere. I didn't even know he existed. I think uh, my first, uh, it's true now, my first <laughs> encounter with him was one day. I, was, I went to run, like I mentioned already, and um, his mom every Sunday, I think his mom, I should go and ask that woman. And <laughs> honestly, I think <laughs> she insists every Sunday that I come to her house to get a meal. Every Sunday I come to get a meal because my parents are not in Nigeria and you know, just you know, as mom just caring nature and all of that. So that Sunday, we were even we were we were having our exams were starting on a Monday. That Sunday we were you know you know how you read you study and everything. Ah, and my friend said to me, at this young day, oh, Alpha, let's go and buy food now. And one person now said, oh. Ah, but there's one meal that comes from me. Please go and get that one. Babe. Just go and get that one. So I went there and I got my meal. She wasn't home. Um, there's someone that, you know, that we go and get whatever we need from and all of that. And then I just saw this guy. I didn't see him. I heard a voice behind me just going, hello, hi, hello, hi. So I stopped and I looked back. And he said, hi, I heard your Pastor Deshala's daughter uh, my name is Leke, nice to meet you, da da da. So I said, oh hi, how are you doing? So that was it. The next time I think I got a call from him was about uh, maybe a month after. <laughs> no, but he found it. <laughs> I didn't give him my he number. He found it. Yeah, I didn't give him my number. How did he even get it? He must have, he had friends in Ron. He had, um, I'm sure my number. My number was available. <laughs> <laughs> so he called me. I was like, oh, I went to um, Zambia. My parents were in Zambia at, that, at the moment, at that time. I went to Zambia and I saw your dad. And he said to check up on you and give you this chocolate. My, my, my mom sent chocolates and some things to me. So he came to drop the chocolates and stuff. So that was how we started being friends. That was how 
the friendship started actually. Mm. 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 <laughs> so he, what he did he wasn't the one that bought it, it was my mother that bought my chocolate. <laughs> so um that was how the friendship started and um you know gradually but I just didn't see myself marrying him because I didn't want to marry a pastor. Not to now talk of marrying the son of the Jew. It was like a no-no. I remember the one afternoon when he finally, one day he messaged me and, because I just considered us as friends. I used to call him my big brother, big bro, big bro. And one day, <laughs> one day, he doesn't... <laughs> so you can still leave the brother's own. <laughs> so, so one day he said to me, this big bro you are calling me, stop calling me big bro. I said, what's wrong with you, big bro? <laughs> Why would I stop? So one day, um, he just texted me. I was, I, was, I was at work. I was doing my internship then. And he just texted me. I saw a text. I don't know what you did to me, but I can't stop thinking about you or something like that. <laughs> and then I'm like, what's wrong with you? So I, I, I was like, okay, I had to look at the name and then look at the phone. I was like, I was so confused at that point. Like, okay, so what? Um, I really don't know what's happening here. Because I just didn't consider that we would end up together at all. It wasn't, it wasn't on my mind. Um, so he called me much later. And then starts talking, saying all sorts of things. I'm like, okay. And I think that made me sort of withdraw for him, from him for a while. I, I kind of started keeping to myself um, because I didn't want any emotion to develop or anything like that. And eventually, when he even when he even asked that we we get in, you know we become closer, we, you know if I would marry him, I said no the first time he asked. Me, I said no, I can't. And I remember him saying that disturbed him a lot and all of that. But really, well, story. That's how we we met, Sha. That's how. We, you know, <laughs> so um, now that you are a pastor's wife, what is the experience like? And now that you have seen things that happened to pastor's wife, do you relate more to what your mom must have gone through when you were growing up? Mm. Well, being a pastor's wife, I think, first of all, I think finding yourself is important. Many people try to live up to the standard of who they are not. So they are struggling with, with being who they should be. You know, um, I hear many people say some pastor's wife wear hats because Mommy Joe wears hats. You know, they do this because Mommy Joe does it. I don't even like hats to start with. I'll do my fascinator, I'll do my scarves. I really don't like hats. Because one, my mother forced me to wear a lot of it while I was young. So I grew up not really liking hats. Um, uh, so I think when you find yourself and when you are, you are able to be in a comfortable space with yourself, it's easy to cope with whatever people are throwing at you. I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of doing. I know that irrespective, there are certain things I would not do whether I was a pastor's wife, pastor's daughter, or not. Now, even though my mom didn't pierce my ears, I'm a grown adult now. I can decide to do it. But I'm comfortable not having it. I'm, not, I'm used to it. And I'm actually now very comfortable not using too much of jewelry, just... I love myself the way I am. So I've accepted myself and I know who I am. It doesn't really bother me much what other people have to say. Of course, some opinions are important, but it's not every opinion that is important to your life. And you have to be able to decipher whose opinion is important and whose opinion doesn't matter. Some people will call you, I have an idea, I have a suggestion for you. I think that this is what you should do when you wake up. This is what I listen very attentively. I say, thank you, ma. I disappear and that is it. Whether I do it or not, it's not your, you know, it's not your business at the end of the day. You might not even know whether I, I say thank you. Some people I even kneel down with both knees. Even though I know in my heart, I'm not doing what this woman is going to tell me to do. So fine, I will. Mm -hmm. So having to accept myself for who I am has helped me to, to be able to guard myself as a young pastor's wife, so to say. You know, I think uh, I hope that answers the question. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, yeah. Um, another thing is now that you you know you grew up in the home of a pastor, and now your children are pastors' kids. Is there anything probably your parents did that you are trying to do different in 
with your children probably there was a certain way your parents acted and you're trying is there anything like that or is there a new way you're trying maybe you're trying to get on you know, like yeah so the the generation that i grew up is different from the generation my children are growing up in now my two-year-old son knows how to get to youtube once i give him my phone he knows how to get to peppa pig and he knows how to get to Paw Patrol. I don't even know how they, because I don't have Paw Patrol like sitting on the first page of my YouTube. So the generation that I was in, where, you know, we just do ten ten, patewa, patewa, is different from the generation that they are in currently. And as a, I will be deceiving myself if I, if I raise my children the way my parents raised me. There are aspects of that that I cannot do without, you know knowing God, helping them understand who they are, helping them. Because my daughter will come and say, um, Mommy, I want to... Um, yeah, she gave to, so she gave to me um, some time back and said, Mommy, but I want a ring. So I said, a ring for what? What is the ring for? She said, but he, yeah, somebody in our class had a ring. Our mommy bought a ring. I said, I don't know why. I said, what's your name? She said, let me see. I said, what's the person's name? She told me. I said, you are a missy. I don't know why this, um, your friend's mom bought a ring, but you are not getting a ring. You are a different person. When it's time to get a ring, you will know. Nobody will even tell you. You will know. <laughs> you will know when you get a ring. So I have to be more... I, I, looking back at that kind of scenario, if I'd gone to my mom to tell her that, she'd probably be like, kill on share. Ring. <laughs> she, you know, ring at that age. You know, fine. Mom, she's a. I'm just trying to, you know, you know, balance both. But for my children, I have to discuss. I have to make them understand. You know, sometimes very annoying. Mole, if you feel like just yeah, bow your money. What's all this nonsense? And she's like, I. If you say do this, no, mommy. Why should I even do it? No, yes. Why should I do it? No, but you have to be able to understand that that's the generation we are in. Children are very bold. So you have to help them understand and find themselves right. And you're like, Where do, why are you talking that way? You can't be rude. Okay, sit down. Come. What's wrong? And she now tells you, um, this person did this to me and I did not like it. I'm upset, mommy. Somebody did. Do you understand? You have to be able to have conversations with, the children, with your children. So I am sort of trying to balance that out as a mom now. Okay, so um, um, another very important question is that we have these stereotypes that are associated with pastors' wives. They are the people that always write notes. Your skirt is this, or you get like those type of stereotypes. They are the mommies that you get. So for you, are you trying to fall into that stereotype? Are you trying to stay above the cliche for pastors' wives? <laughs> okay, like I said, there are certain things I wouldn't even do whether I was a pastor's wife or not. There are certain things I would do irrespective of what, whether I'm a pastor's Do you get it? So, um, I think just being who I am and being true to myself sort of helps me with any cliche or no cliche or whatever it is. So, I just... Um, there are certain times you have to just bow for example, you know, whether your hair is fresh and new, for all you go service, you have to cover it. A hair. Recently, my mother-in-law called me. I made my hair. And she said, Titi, be naive. Oh, fine, go. It's very nice. But, Oti Guju. Oti, you know, you, you have to just understand that where they are coming from. Because they still, they feel like people have a certain expectation of them. And they also expect that to trickle down on their children and all of that. So you have to help them manage it. Uh -huh. You have to help them manage it. We still fall into it every once in a while. But then, not too deep in, you know. Not too deep in. I try to stay, you know, um, above the water sometimes. So, Ma, another very important question is, for you, what scripture is your mantra? Like, when, what, what is the scripture that drives you every day? Okay, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Can someone read it for us? And I think also Isaiah 43, verse 2. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and Isaiah 43, verse 2. Can so, okay, so one person read that, and the other person read, read that for us. 
Okay, are you ready? Come, please. My mic. Jeremiah 43 verse no, 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 29 verse 11. Isaiah 43 verse 2. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Yes. For I know the plans Isaiah I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you. What about Isaiah 43 2? Yes, please. You can come. So, Jerem, I know the thoughts that God has for me. It comforts me every day, waking up to know that he has great thoughts for me. You know, thoughts of peace, thoughts of, you know, thoughts for life. You know, so that every day gives me strength. Also, Isaiah, Isaiah 43 verse 2, and it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be turned. The flames will not set you ablaze. So, um, those two passages, they sort of give me a lot of hope throughout my day. I was on holiday. Let me read that. I want to, one second. I want to read that. Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passeth through waters, I'll be with you. Through the rivers, it shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. So really, it gives me strength every day, knowing how much God has my back, no matter what is going on around me. And when you consider how water is, I was on holiday a few weeks back. <laughs> hey! I and mean, my husband decided to try some risky things. Um, we went um, sky. Did we? Oh yeah, we went. Bo <laughs> we shall went to the middle of the sea, sha, and we we're riding bike, and we we're bike on power bike on the sea, and then we did a couple of you know stunts. <laughs> and I was telling him, I said, "Babe, please slow down." <laughs> we both don't know how to swim, although we had we had life jackets on. And the guys were around, but for some reason, at a point, I just realized that the because it, it would be like a a a boat would take you to where you would you, you can't even get a boat would take you to where you start where you will meet another boat and then you get into the bike and then start riding on the water you know around some certain places. Now imagine Todd Milan Bridge, yeah, that's the kind of thing we're doing. And I said, babe, come slow down. <laughs> So that's how we wanted to do one. They said, very badly, so that's how we fell inside the water. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Oh, hey. Even though we had life jackets on, but I was. Ah, oh, God. I wanted to die. <laughs> I was so afraid. And we said, babe, calm down. Calm down. And even though, you know, I think um, if I didn't know that that man loved me, I know he loved me that day because we both didn't know how to swim. And he was holding me up in the water so i was like oh okay all right so i was drinking salt water i think i was really scared and it was a bit just calm down but as i calmed down more i was able to so sort i of drink less water and it was <laughs> it helped me up but unfortunately there were the guys that were supposed to be watching us and around us were just nowhere to be found at that point so i want to even say help I couldn't because water was in my mouth. So eventually, they I think they saw us and then they came. Now, considering how large something like the water, like a sea would be, and God saying that I would be with you through that, it's a comfort to know that every situation in life, he has my back and, you know, I'm going to be comfortable no matter what happens. So I will still go back if I have the opportunity to do that. Uh, this thing. So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> sure now, you just, you know, you yeah, pay for my own, um, pay your tickets. So, um, <laughs> Ma, you work with a lot of people and you are quite popular. Yes. Ma, if you don't believe you are popular. And, um, do you feel, oh, okay, it's, it's threefold. Do you feel overwhelmed? Have you ever felt like giving up? 
and um, how do you handle haters? Okay, I work with young people. Do I feel overwhelmed? Of course, I even feel overwhelmed just being around my husband sometimes. I'm much more young. Yeah, so definitely, it can be overwhelming. Just even life itself can be overwhelming. You have your own issues to deal with. You have your own life to live. So it can be overwhelming sometimes. Life itself, and um, sometimes why it feels overwhelming. Some people you can't really help them with their problems. Ah. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's true. You, you. They tell you things, and you know that. There's absolutely no way I can help this person. Only God and maybe these other people can help this person. So something you feel is it's like a a trouble even to you that you cannot seem to you don't have a solution for that person's problem. And then some people generally are just the stress of having to work with young people can be overwhelming sometimes. That's just the truth. But somehow like I say, and I always say, God gives us the grace to forge ahead. I mean, one person at a time. Even though you have your own problems, you have to understand, as a person that people look up to, to an extent, that even though I don't have all the money I need, um, when people come to me and they need help, I still have to help them, even from the little that I have. You know, I have to understand that, even though I have my own emotional needs, when people come to me and they sort of need, like, they are looking for a form of balance emotionally. I have to be able to help them from how God has helped me so far and the experiences I have. So we, you know, we try to manage with it somehow. Yeah. Then how do you how do you deal with haters? Ah, but because I read your comments on Instagram, like, <laughs> and then some people are just not it, or people, those people that just don't like you because. I, mean, I don't look at people like that too. if you hate me you, are, you hate me mm -hmm. it doesn't move me what people haters or no haters I don't <laughs> I don't really I don't really I don't really care so to say when it comes to of course growing up wanting everybody to accept your opinion or uh, accept you for the way you are was there but at the point you just get in your life and you're like, really? This doesn't matter. Cutting off. So even comments sometimes, like you said on Instagram, I ignore some comments. I don't I don't patronize everyone. I don't, you know, reply everything. I just sort of stay clear. And I try to avoid um, conflicts. You know, I don't like getting into unnecessary conflict or argument with people, I try to avoid it as much as possible. Rather, I would cut the person off and have my peace. What the Bible asks us to do is to follow peace with all men, not friendship. Mm. Nuggets. I said it's so, nuggets. So, it's not it's not um, it, you don't have to be everybody's friend. You have to love everybody like the Bible says. I love everyone and I'm saying this you know, truly and truly. I would help you if I have the chance to. But you don't have to be my friend. I don't have too many friends. In fact, I don't have a lot of friends. I, I mind my space. I, I protect my space because it means a lot to me. I'm already, I already have a lot to do. So I don't, I don't need an unnecessary drama, so to say. Yeah. So, um, Ma, if you could talk to 20-year-old Titi, as in, you could talk to her, like maybe you could go back in time, no time travel. Mm -hmm. and you could speak to her. What would you tell her? Ah, 20 year old teacher, I would probably have told her, don't do your masters, go to culinary school in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, then it was important that, you know, masters, ah, every parent wants their child to further their. Like, in fact, my father, after masters, we were talking about PhD, I said that, you, don't worry, the one you have, share it for all of us. You are five. <laughs> I'll take one. When my brother and sister, you still have two. We are all, I'm okay. I, I'm not doing any PhD. So, um, I, so I probably because if I had I realized on time that what I'm doing now is what I'll be doing, I would have wasted. I didn't waste it actually because the knowledge to I studied marketing and management. 
so the knowledge is, is very you know it's very helpful now in my business but i would have probably used it in france i would have probably gone to culinary school there's a culinary school i want to go to i still will go there it's just that it's taking longer than i think and every time i bring up the topic with my husband, i remember when I, I first had my baby i didn't even know i was pregnant that one is another gist to another day and i was <laughs> i don't want to say it because i don't know where my daughter will hear this so i, I don't want to say it <laughs> i'm not going to say that um but when i finally moved back to nigeria from uk after my masters and uh, i realized that this bank thing will not work this professional thing that i'm chasing it's uh, actually i don't really think i want it that bad anymore this is what i want now i <laughs> i mentioned that i'm going to france and i was like ah for how many for how many weeks i said for like a year ah what will now happen okay please now just let her be like four four let her turn like four but then before she turned four another baby had it, you know <laughs> another baby joy so of course um there are still things i'm chasing generally in life and i will still do them but it's just that it might take a bit longer than it would have been so i'll probably have just busted the the masters to go to france enjoy my life and i'll probably have told my husband you know what she will marry ourselves abby just let's go 20 years uh -huh. after 20 years they will now come back to get married <laughs> that sounds really funny or silly but um i think um yeah that would be it really okay so um uh, finally um before, okay, almost finally, but in a generation where everybody is claiming they are woke and they are liberal and people are saying things they don't even understand, and then we have people that are talking about feminism and things, and it's not like it's wrong, but what are your views on them? Okay, good. Feminism. So, feminism is the notion that we are equal to men and all of that. Um, of course, the idea of, of feminism is in the Bible itself. God created everyone in his own image. There is no one that is lesser than the other. There is, we, God has given us equal opportunity and equal access to do whatever we set our minds on doing. So it's not about uh, you being proud. Some people say it's because you are proud. It's because you are this. But if you know who you are, um, I think that sort of helps to, to, to know that you know, feminism or no feminism, this is who God has created me to be. I am going to do this because God has given me the power to do it. It's not because I'm a woman or a man, but because he has given me this the grace to do this, so I will do it. I, uh, I don't know. I, even for my business, I think I intentionally sort of employ more women. It's intentional because sometimes you find women sort of losing themselves. I don't know it's like that idea that you know you without a man you are not without this it's you know it's not it's very I don't know it's very funny if you find yourself concentrate on finding yourself fighting for yourself find when you find yourself the right person will find you when you invest in yourself and you feel that you are ready to move on at certain levels in your life then go ahead and do that. So many people are shy to, what is it shy? Are afraid. Or they listen to what people tell them. But who are you to start with? Who do you think you are? So finding yourself, irrespective of whether being uh, what the society is saying, will help you go a long way. Feminism or no feminism, I know I'm created in the image of God. I'm pushing my dreams. I have, thank God, I have a, a spouse that is supportive, a family that is supportive. But, uh, you know, that is it. I don't want to say too much about that. So, but I hope, is that good? So, Ma, you've dropped a lot of nuggets and people have learned enough. But um, what would you say, like, if you could teach us something from God today? What we teach us, like, or what is God asking you to teach us? That new revelation that you want to share hmm. with us. Okay. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5. 
Is anyone there? Please read for us. It's a very simple passage that I'm sure we all know. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean on, on thy own understanding. What God is teaching me, I think probably this year, is the aspect of trusting him more. So many things have happened in my life this year that I thought, is this even possible? Can this even Will this even? And somehow he just makes a way and you are wowed. So the God is teaching us to trust him. Well, teaching me, I don't know about you. I don't know what God is teaching you at this point. But he's teaching me to trust him. Sometimes I feel like I have these plans. I've written it down. This is how I want it to happen this month. This is and the Bible is and God is saying, trust not your own understanding. Trust me first. So I'm really learning a lot of a lot from that, especially in my family, in my business. I mean, I opened a new branch recently, and honestly, how it all happened, it can only be God because I don't even know how it happened. I mean, from a business that was small. I mean, I think when I started, I probably paid monthly salaries of maybe about one fifty k. Now we pay over one million naira every month in salaries, and I'm wondering how. How? That's just minus bonuses and all that. How? Every month. So, and God is telling me, trust me, trust me. I got your back. I will do this. So we all have to get to a point in our life where we we learn to trust God fully for everything in our lives. It doesn't mean we are not working at it because some people just. Um, sit down and be like, uh, okay. I'm not saying sit down and just trust and do nothing. No, but as you proceed in different area of your life, and you know, at whatever level you are, learn to trust God more. Learn to rely more on Him. You know, fine. Man might disappoint you. What you hope to get might not be what you get. But God is saying that trust Him more. Ooh. Can we put our together for God? Can we put our together for Mrs. Titi Adewe for being used as a best by God? Can we clap? Like, Woo! praise God. So I, I, I feel like I believe that we have tried our best to ask questions, but I feel like there's something that you feel like personally you want to ask her. So we're taking two questions. So if you want to ask your question, like, please just put up your hands. Just two questions. Okay, one. Who else? Okay, two. Please can you come forward? Please can you put us together for them? morning thank you very much for everything you've been saying okay I, I my question goes thus I love teenagers I love children and even before you mentioned this morning I understand that you have to have conversations with children no matter how young they are you have to tell them about boys sex and all of that even if they are two or three okay but then I also would really love to marry someone who knows how to handle this kind of conversations. Like, I may talk to my girl child. I would love him having conversation with the boys and like that. But then, I can't start looking for someone in there because until I find someone that can have that conversation, so I won't get married. So what happens if, or um, is your husband someone like that? Or if he's not like that, how do you tend to, and would you just take it upon yourself, okay, fine, I know he's not good here. Should I just go ahead? Or do you have to have a conversation with him to let him understand the importance of him speaking with his children? Thank you. Okay. Um, I think if you, if you happen to, uh, of course, before you get married to anyone, which of marriage should not be the ultimate goal of any one of us, by the way, I mean, let's focus on ourselves 
now you're ready you want to get married if you happen to have someone you're you're looking to get married to the place of having conversation with that person cannot be overemphasized you need to be able to talk you know discuss your expectations plans for the future this and that and that and that and also so at that stage you can talk about that also you don't have to wait on your husband to to do certain things if you feel that maybe he's not doing it and it pertains to the children you can prompt him to do it or you can do it as a mother as well you should be able to you know be all rounded when it comes to raising your children for me that i have a spouse that travels a lot i tend to be the mom and dad sometimes do you understand so that is not there and children can be funny even when they are there so my daughter comes to ask for sweet i say no then she goes to daddy daddy i want sweet so do you get so they know how to play pranks on you and if you don't come as a united force there will be problems growing up personally if my mom says no no if my dad says no that is it it's a no they both have the same voice so probably i think maybe they go and discuss and be like okay i'm going to have me this is what i said so even when you go and meet daddy it's the same response you get at least if if daddy says no sometimes by the help of god if you can talk to mommy very well maybe you can get a yes uh -huh. at the end of the day somehow magically but they always have a united voice when they are raising us up so that's the kind of thing i'm bringing into my, with my children as well so sometimes you just hear me shouting from the room somewhere shall ask for sweet no <laughs> uh, so that is it but mommy said no why did you come and meet me so they learn that when mommy says that don't do this it's wrong or i don't want you to have this at this, at this time daddy will also say the same thing so there's no point so but if you are if, if if the children feel like someone hates them or doesn't have their back then it causes unnecessary confusion in them. good morning ma so um how did you form the decision to actually marry your husband um, there's this man on your case and um, of course when your parents hear it and they're like ah ah that the Jews from say yes say yes or something there's pressure and then um, of course there are other people that you might even be like more interested in so what formed your decision because you said you did you even um, avoided him for for a bit before saying yes then secondly about your business how much of um, you run a very successful business to the glory of God so um, how much if you were not married to who you are married to if you are not who you are how much um, success do you actually think you would have achieved outside that influence and how do you boost no 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 guys these are real questions though. these are real questions and how would you outside the influence of who you are how would you actually build or how did you build your business that's just okay thank you this this is a fantastic question so to start with how did i form my opinion to hello are we listening how did i form my opinion to eventually marry my husband um so after a while we, we got talking more i I don't know. I guess as a teenager or as a I, guess I, want to, I, want to I don't know. Um, uni fresh. You know how people who gist in the room. My husband must be this. I want my husband. Girls did that a lot. I want my husband to this. He must be tall, dark, and I just used to look at the girls and be like, whatever, girls. I was not that kind of person that would sit down and fantasize about how my husband. Would that's how, how uninterested I was. Because I, I was just concerned about getting to a certain point in my life where I felt like, okay, you know what? Now I am ready. I don't want anybody to come and disturb me with any love thing. And, you know, so that's how I was as a person. So having to now switch to be able to... And I remember one particular thing that eventually started changing my mind and even made me go and 
attempt praying about it. I remember we were talking after I had asked me to, you know, would I marry him and all of that. I mean, our relation was, I mean, our, the way it was, was, let's be down. I mean, <laughs> maybe he thought with, I think he, we were friends, of course. Maybe he thought I had feelings. Because how do you ask someone to marry you and you are not really sure, uh, all of that stuff. So eventually one day he said to me, um, I said to him, I said, I have a lot to do. I just don't want marriage right now. There's just a lot about my life. There's just a lot of my mind. I mean, just said this. He said, but you know your life still continues. It just has me in it. Lord nugget write it down pick up line oh, guys yeah, I was like, oh yeah that's true oh, that's true what were you thinking were you thinking your life would actually like completely out or what <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, because i still remember that till today so i was like oh okay that's true it's just i'll be married actually but i still have a life Okay, all right, now let's let's begin to pray about this thing. Let's begin to, you know, so I think um, 